Good morning and welcome back to Farm Factor at the KSU Beef Stocker Conference. Let's join Dwayne Taves as he and Dr. Walter Fick discuss old world blue stem grasses. For Ag AM in Kansas, I'm Dwayne Taves uh, joining you from uh, the Kansas uh, State University Beef Stocker Conference, a chance to catch up with Walt Fick, uh, talking about uh, grasses. And uh, it's got blue stem in the name, but obviously, Walt, uh, all blue stems are not the same. And you talk to the growers and producers here about uh, one in particular that's becoming more of a problem for us. Yes, there's, there's a category of plants we refer to them as old world blue stems. And uh, that includes both uh, Caucasian blue stem, which has been around probably since the 1930s. And then the rest of them, uh, it's, a, it's a different species. We just refer to them as yellow old world blue stems. But they have uh, did come from that name, as that name implies, came from another part of the world rather than North America. As far as uh, a stalker operator or a cowman in general, what kind of an impact is this having in some of our pastures? Well, the big, big problem is, is, you know, the old world blue stems were introduced as a forage crop and, you know, planted in solid seeded stand and, and you can graze them pretty hard and, you know, uh, get quite a bit of beef per acre. But the problem has been is, is they won't stay inside the fence. And so they've spread out of those areas or even along the roadsides. I think there have been a lot of planting in the past along the roadside. It spreads out into our native range. It's not as palatable as our native grasses and thus uh, it doesn't get a whole lot of grazing use and, and it's gonna flourish under that situation. So it, it's gradually, it's spreading and will take over areas. So for a grass manager, what are some of the logical steps to try and reduce the incidence? Well, I think it depends on, on the, how dense the stand is. You know, in some cases, if it's a large enough area, I might be tempted to fence it off and, and actually stalk it real heavy, try to use, use it. You know, they will graze it if, if they don't have a lot of choice. But if it's scattered around in a pasture, I think um, we really don't have any good management options for us. You know, fire is not going to help us. Uh, so we've been looking at some herbicides, uh, things like uh, Roundup, you know, the glyphosate products uh, will kill the old world blue stems. The problem is they also affect most everything else that might be actively growing at the time. Uh, another product that, that also is, is labeled for range in pasture is a product, the trade, and I'll use the trade name, is called Arsenal. And uh, at a high rate, that's a, that's a bare ground treatment as well. But at the rates we're using, we're looking at quarter to half pound range. And it seems to be more selective. We're getting good uh, reduction uh, on the old world blue stems uh, without damaging all the natives. A lot of our native grasses uh, are surviving that Arsenal treatment. Uh, so that looks, looks promising. Our thanks to Walt Fick uh, joining us here at the Beef Soccer Conference. We'll send it back to Jamie in studio for more Ag AM in Kansas. Thanks, Dwayne. Coming up next, Dwayne catches up with John Mulhagen, owner of Molly Manufacturing. Stay with us. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com.